1 Peter 2, 11 and 12. Beloved, I exhort you as pilgrims and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, and let your conduct be good before all men, so that they who speak evil words against you may see your good actions and may glorify Yah in the day of triumph. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hope you all are enjoying your day so far. I'm going to wait for a few more people to come in. Come in, come in. Shalom. Shalom, sister. How are you? I'm going to wait for a couple more people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda for another day. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So, um, brothers and sisters, um, when we read um, 1 Peter chapter 2, um, verses 11 and 12, it speaks um, of us not being filled um, with... Um, lust uh fleshly lust and also that we um and in this chapter is paul is actually the apostle shaul is actually speaking to those israelite strangers those who of the diaspora those who have been scattered and these are the descendants um, of those um uh, and and these are the Israelite stranger, they are Israelites. And so we know when the Messiah came, he said that he come not except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he being himself from the house of Judah, along with Paul, who was from the house of Judah, from the tribe of Benjamin. And all of the other disciples were from the house of Judah, the southern kingdom. And their all and their all of their missions, including the apostle Shaul, was the same, and that was going to seek that which was lost, going to uh, ministering um, to uh, those Israelite strangers, those who had um, been estranged from the covenant, um, who had no idea who they were and the customs. Um, oftentimes, you will read in what you call the New Testament, the Renewed Covenant, you will read where uh, the Apostle Shaul Paul is addressing them when he says, all, our father was, all of our fathers were under the cloud. And we know that the only ones that were under a cloud where Yah followed the children of Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He's speaking about the children of Israel. Those were the only people that he could have been speaking about. Um, and so he's oftentimes, the Apostle Shaul is addressing um, the Israelites, okay? He's addressing the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is something that many um, fail to realize when they read the Renewed Covenant. They think that this is a new people, and these are the same people. These are those descendants from those same people that he made that covenant with. And so in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and 11 and 12, the Apostle Shaul in verses 11 and 12, he is speaking to them, tell, calling them pilgrims and foreigners, okay? As those who are going to be returning back, we, so-called African Americans, we are from the tribe of Judah, okay? From the house of Judah and also from the tribe of Judah. Um, we are returning back, okay? We are returning back to that covenant. We are strangers in this land. We're foreigners. This is not our homeland. This is not where we're from. Remember, we were uh, brought here on slave ships, okay, to be um, enslaved and suffering the uh, the punishments um, for our forefathers' disobedience, those curses of Deuteronomy 28. And so we are here as strangers, just as we today are have come back into knowledge of who we are and we're returning back to the everlasting covenant. We're returning back to the Torah, his law, those teachings and instructions, his commandments, his statutes and his judgments. Many of us have began uh, the process of um, 
letting go uh, of the, the traditions and the customs of men. And we are now embracing uh, those same customs and traditions that were handed down to our forefathers, beginning with uh, Abraham to Isaac and from Isaac to Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons and the story goes on from here. And so we did not keep the covenant. And uh, because of our disobedience, he divorced the northern kingdom, but he kept a tribe for himself. He kept the southern kingdom, uh, the house of Judah. And so, but Judah went astray just like Israel did. Okay. And so, but he did not divorce the Southern kingdom, the house of Judah. He only divorced the Northern kingdom, which many refer to as Ephraim or Israel. And so when they became, um, he divorced the kingdom after the death, uh, of King Solomon, the two kingdoms split. And this was Yah's will that they would split. They have been divided all the way up until even as today, these two kingdoms were split. So many people do not understand this because they teach that the law is done away with. They have no understanding of what's going on and what you refer to as the New Testament. They think that these are a new people. And these are those same people. These are the descendants from those who were scattered, okay, to the four corners of the earth. And you see the apostle Shaul is speaking with these people. Their descendants, the descendants of our forefathers, there's so once you become estranged and they no longer knew who they were anymore. Okay. When, if, if I, um, I had forefathers, my forefathers were, um, when we had a family reunion years ago, found out that our, for our forefathers were those who came here on that transatlantic slave ship. Okay. And so as time went on, if they beat a tradition and a custom and a way of living out of you, and you continue to have children. If you don't know what your heritage is, you, you are ignorant of your heritage, who you are, where you came from. How can you teach something to your children that you yourself don't even know? Okay. When our forefathers came here, we were, they beat religion into us and beat the religion of Christianity in us. We were not Christians. We did not speak English. We spoke Hebrew. We uh, did not keep holidays and Christmas and Easter and all of these things. We did not eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. These were the traditions and customs from the land where we were scattered. We began to serve the gods of wood and stone. The God of wood is um, Christianity and the God of stone is Islam. These are the two major religions. And Yah told us that we would not, we would no longer know who he was. We no longer were accustomed to who he was an ox he says knows his owner but israel doesn't even consider so many of us have no knowledge of who yah is we have no understanding of knowledge or knowledge of understanding we don't have a clue that we're those chosen people but those ezekiel 37 dry bones are being prophesied to because he has his servants that are out here his teachers his prophets that are out here speaking the inspired word of Yah, they are out here giving water, which is a word of Yah to those bones. And those bones are awakening up and they are standing and rising up as we are now on our feet. And we are now remembering because he says, and you will remember, we are now remembering who we were. And so this is what's going on in what you refer to as the New Testament. Paul is now preaching to these people. When it says that he was an apostle and being a light to the Gentiles, he's not talking about um, people who were not Israelite. These were Gentiles um, who no longer knew uh, who they were. They were no longer in covenant. In the beginning, many people in Israel try to use um, the table of nations. They use um, Genesis chapter 10 verses 1 through 5, and then they try to use um, Japheth or Japheth, however you want to pronounce it. And they'll say, well, all the Gentiles come from Japheth or Japheth, which is incorrect. I, I strongly suggest if you believe that, that you watch our teaching, and I'm going to link it to this video called All Were Gentiles, the truth about Genesis chapter 10, one through five. All, oh, let me say this and clear this up because you know, we don't speak anything on this channel unless we can back it up with scriptures. All before we um came into the covenant 
through our forefather Abraham, all were Gentiles. Let me say this again. All were Gentiles. And so if you're a Gentile, this just means that you are not in covenant with him. You're not in a relationship with him. He chose a people and he chose Israel, the children of Israel. Israel just comes from the, our forefather, Jacob, Jacob, um, Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob. And then Jacob's name was changed by the father Yah to Israel and Israel, who is Jacob. These are the sons of Jacob. So when you speak about the children of Israel, you're talking about the sons of Jacob. Okay. The 12 sons of Jacob are the children of Israel. Okay. And so those, um, children that he had walked away, they entered into a covenant with him and they be, we became the chosen people of Yah and we stepped away from that covenant. We did not obey the covenant and there was, uh, heaven and earth were the witnesses against us for this covenant that we stood and, and made and agreed that we would obey all of what Yah has commanded. They said in Exodus 19, three through eight, that all that Yah has said we will do. And they did not do it. Okay. So they broke that covenant and the council, the consequences for continuously breaking the covenant, um, was and, and committing acts of idolatry and adultery against our father. Yah was divorced. So he divorced the children of Israel and he sent them out of his house. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 24, Deuteronomy 24 speaks about the only reason how a uh, legal reason that will, uh, that you can legally get a divorce and it's uncleanness, sexual immorality, uncleanness. Well, Israel, um, yeah, I found uh, Israel to be unclean because they were, um, entertaining other guys. They were committing acts of adultery. And so finally, Yah got tired and he divorced the Northern kingdom, which many of you refer to now as the children of Israel. Okay. When those two houses split, when the Messiah came, he said, I come not except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These are the ones that he came for. Many people do not want to accept this, but this is the truth. Does that mean that no other nation can be saved? No, that is not true. We do not teach this here. We do not teach hatred of other nations or teach that other nations cannot be saved because that is a lie. So if you're listening to any Israelite congregation assembly and they're teaching that the only people who can be saved are the blood descendant Israelites, you need to run and run fast because they're teaching lies. But that does not change the fact that he did choose a people and he is going to renew that covenant with the same people. He tells you that in Hebrews chapter eight, eight through 10, as well as Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 33. Now, so what is going on in the um, beginning when he divorced, when he divorced Israel because the Northern kingdom, because of their idolatry and, and, and committing adultery, he sent them out of his house as per Deuteronomy 24. Okay. So when he sent them out of his house, where did he, what place did he name with, what, what, uh, what place did he name as the place where he would place his name? That was Jerusalem, Israel. Okay. So we were kicked out of the land just as if a husband and a wife, if a husband catches his wife cheating and he's going to divorce her, that tells you per the law, per the Torah in Deuteronomy 24, that you will give the, the wife the get and give it to her in her hand. And then she is free at that point to go and be another man's wife. But you can't take her back if she goes to the next husband and he finds uncleanness and finds no favor in her. You can't go back to your first husband because then that will make you defiled. That's the whole reason why the Messiah had to come because Yah himself couldn't take us back because we were already defiled with other gods. So he had to send his son so that he could come back and renew that covenant. The father Yah is not going to break his Torah. When you teach that the law is done away with, you have no understanding of this. So, so many of you may be listening to this and it may be confusing. I said, I strongly suggest that you watch the video, all we're Gentiles that is click that is um, attached. Um, the link will be attached to this video. I had to redo this previously. 
um, back maybe like six years ago, we did a three part series on who are the Gentiles. It was, uh, three parts. It was part one, part two and part three. Um, I did part two and then we had a part three. Part one was basically revealing who the true children of Israel are. That was done by one of our uh, sisters who, who's been studying up under me, Autumn. And then I did part two, you know, who are those uh, grafted in Gentiles that in the New Testament? That was me. I did part two. And then we had a part three that was done by someone else. Um, and it was speaking about the other nations, what happens with the other nations. Um, there are some things that I had, the father God has brought me into that I no longer believe. And that's the reason why I did all were Gentiles. And so I deleted part one and part two off of the channel. Part one has been renamed the, the truth about the so-called African Americans. And, um, now you, if you want to learn who the true Gentiles are, who, who are these Gentiles in the New Testament that's being grafted in, um, and, and some additional information that the father y'all brought me into is you, then you will, you will watch the video all with Gentiles, um, that's attached below. Um, the reason why I'm even beginning with this is because, um, I also deleted part three about what about the other nations, what was dropped in my spirit is we need to stop worrying about what's going to happen with the other nations and being distracted with that. And we need to be focused on examining ourselves to see if we are truly in the faith. There are many that are in Israel that are worried about the white man and worried about every other nation and who's going to hell and who's y'all's going to punish, but yet they're still fornicating. They're still getting drunk. They're practicing sorcery. They're practicing manipulation. Many are worried about, still filled with the spirit of lust, worried about having 10 wives. And they're still, they still have not repented of their sins. The reason why I'm doing this video is because when you read first Peter chapter two, 11 and 12, it tells us, Paul, he is speaking to those people, those Israelite strangers who became Gentiles, once he divorced them, once he, per Deuteronomy 24, once, if he finds sexual uncleanness and he divorces you, then that man gives a get, which is that divorce, the written of divorce to the wife, and then you send her out of, you separate from her, and then you send her out of your house. There's a three-part process to divorce. Yas, divorce Israel. Okay, the northern kingdom, not the southern kingdom. He had to leave the kingdom uh, for us to come back through, which was who our Messiah came through. When he divorced the, the children of Israel, the northern kingdom, okay, those which you refer to as the ten lost tribes, they became Gentiles because he said that you will no longer be my people. When you read in Hosea, he said that you will be a. He said you will no longer be my people. When he says you're no longer my people. That means once he has divorced you, he sent them out of his house. Where's the place where he chose to put his name? Everyone know that it's Israel, Jerusalem. What did he do? He kicked us out of the land. This is how our people ended up here. So called African Americans, you are those people. When you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. He's talking about you. When you read Genesis 15 to 13, that was a prophecy that our people would go into slavery for 400 years. But he says, after that 400 year punishment up is up, I'm going to judge that nation. That's what's going on right now. Judgment is going on <laughs> with this nation and every other nation that took part at per Psalms 83. They, they all were confederate. They all were in agreement to take the name of Israel so that we would no longer remember who we were. And they were all in agreement. They all made a covenant. All these other nations know who we are. They made a covenant that they will continue to hide the truth from us. But what they cannot hide is when Yah awakens those dry bones. And so this is how we ended up here. Per go. If those of you, especially those of you are Christian, because I know your pastors are not teaching this because they're telling you that the law is done away with. When you read Deuteronomy 24, you will see that our father, Yah, followed that same blueprint. He found uncleanness in the children of Israel. They committed adultery because they were serving and worshiping other gods. Okay. Bowing down to them, sacrificing their children. 
in the fire to these gods. And the father, yeah, finally got tired, but he divorced the Northern kingdom, which you refer to as the 10 lost tribes. When he did that, now the part he separated from them and he gave them a written get of divorce. And then he sent them out of his house. That's how we got kicked out. When he sent us out of his house, Jerusalem, Israel was the, his, the place where he chose to put his name. So we got kicked out. And then when, he, when we got kicked out, he sent them other nations after us. Part of that punishment was what's going on right now. So what happened? We got scattered here. We were shipped, just like he said we would if we broke those curses. He set before us life and death, blessings and curses. He says, choose life so that you, both you and your descendants may live. Okay, if we would have obeyed him and kept the commandments, per Deuteronomy 28, the verses 1 through 13, we would have received all the blessings. We would have been on top and not on the bottom. Okay, we would have been uh, blessed going in and coming out. We would have had... Um, we would have been the bar the lenders and not the borrowers. Okay. But that's not the case. We're, we're filled with sickness and filled with diseases. Have we have the, it's a reason why we have the highest rate of all diseases. Okay. It's because it, the scripture tells you that in Deuteronomy 28, read the entire chapter. He told us that a nation would come whose symbol is an eagle would come afar and it would take and would take us to a land that we nor our forefathers have ever known. We wouldn't understand the language and that they would take us away, the children away from the parents. Just read it. I don't have time to sit here and read all of the curses. But he said that you wouldn't have no rest, no peace. He said that your life will always be in danger, that you will always be oppressed. You will always be afflicted. And he said that. And then the dagger is the, the, the 400 years because we're the only nation of people that went into slavery that was taken off their homeland and brought to another land to be enslaved for 400 years on slave ships. No other nation can claim that. This is straight Bible when I'm speaking to you. Many of your pastors know this, but they're too afraid to tell you because they're worried about that. Um, that was a, um, 5013C uh C money. That's what they're worried about. Because once they begin, if they deny that money, they don't get any funds. And if they teach the truth, that is hush money. That money that they give them is hush money, and they can control what they teach. But that's we're not under that. This is a teaching ministry, and the Father Yah has commanded me to teach his word, and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to enlighten you guys today because 2021 is not getting ready to be a fantastic year. Let me say this. It's not getting ready to be better. The reason why you saw right after our people landed here, James Jamestown, Virginia, 1619, the last of the slaves, 2019, Jamestown, Virginia, 1619, 2019 was the end of the 400 year punishment. We were scheduled <laughs> to be on punishment according to our Abba for 400 years. When that punishment was up, then you saw that everything just let loose. 2020 was off the chain. Why? Because our 400 year punishment was up. Now, as he said in Genesis 15, 13, he was going to judge this nation. COVID-19 is judgment. And many of the judgments are falling on our people because he said judgment starts with the household. It starts with us, Judah. We're the leaders. We're supposed to be teaching. We're supposed to be bringing other people. We're supposed to be a light. So I want to quickly go back to uh, Second Pete, uh, First Peter, chapter two, verses eleven and twelve. The apostle Shaul was talking to those from the diaspora, our descendants, okay, who became Gentiles once. Yah says you will no longer be my people. And he gave they get, they became Gentiles again. They were no longer in covenant with him because he wasn't married to them. So that's the reason why they became lost. Okay. But Yah is um, going to keep his word. So he sent his son. That's why his son Yeshua said, I come not except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, that's the only reason why he came. Okay, so 
He, he's going to make sure that that covenant is going to be renewed. He's going to take those same people back, but that doesn't mean the other people won't have the right to salvation. We do not preach or teach hate here because that would not be true. So in first Peter chapter two, 11 and 12, he is telling these Israelite strangers, these that are coming back that are learning all over again, who they are, what the custom was. They're being grafted back in. Okay. And when you go and watch the video, all with Gentiles, I give a visual demonstration of what the whole process of engrafting look like. You guys are going to be floored when you see what the father y'all gave to me to present so that you can really get it and understand it. Because we learn as we learn, according to, uh, to the Hebrew that, um, knowledge, um, you're able to, gain knowledge through visual observation and through, and this is how you experience it. So, um, this is the reason why you see me put the PowerPoint together. Like I do, because I really want you to experience the words so that you're able to really get understanding of what he is trying to convey to you. And so he talks about in first Peter chapter two verses 11 and 12, that we and you may see in the scripture may say the Gentiles, some of yours may say the uh, foreigners are strangers. These are those who are returning back. Just like we're, we're foreigners and strangers here in the United States, but this is not who we are. We are Israelites who got scattered here. Okay. Um, but he told Paul, the apostle Shaul is speaking to them. Remember he is dealing with letters Many people do not understand that he's dealing with letters. He's dealing with the new converts who are returning back to their roots, to their heritage, to their customs. Okay. Of their forefathers. That's why he said all our fathers were under the cloud. Whose fathers was under the clouds? Only those who weren't the children of Israel. So he's telling them, look, do not be like you were in when you were in your ignorance before you didn't, before you knew of the Messiah and accepted the belief in his death, burial, and resurrection. Do not be ignorant walking around in the flesh, the lust of your flesh. Okay. He said, which wars against your soul. And he says, make sure that you are not, um, living as according to the ways of the world. When you read first Peter chapter two and 12, it talks about, um, our people not being, being cognizant of your conduct, being aware of your conduct, how you're living your life. He says, so that when you make sure you live in a life and, and you're, you're, you're walking and your conduct is that which is honorable, that which represents our Messiah and the true faith. He says, because he says, so when they accuse you of doing evil, because they will. Okay. When they accuse you of doing evil, they will see your good works. They will see how you are living your life holy and righteous and holy and righteousness according to the word. They won't be able to accuse you. And then he says, then the Father Yah will get the glory. So what I want to say is this. How if how you to those of you, and I'm talking to you, those of you saying you're awakened, you know that we're the chosen people of Israelites. Are you? Because I I see the conduct, the the cursing. They're using a profanity with the scriptures. I'm looking, I'm listening all the time to people talking about their elder, their pastors, but they, every five other, five other word that come out of their mouth is using profanity. Many are very still carnal living and looking like the world. Many in Israel, when I say many, I mean many people who are got Mitri's on their head, wearing tassels and all of this, but going around uh, preaching hatred. Going out, going around worried about having 10 wives dogging the daughters of Zion, calling them bees and whores and MFers and just, just dogging them, acting like they have no place in this, uh, walk unless they're, uh, sitting in the corner. I've seen some disgusting and some detestable behavior from the so-called men in Israel and the hatred that they have for the daughters of Zion is, is, is unbelievable. They, what is the conduct that many of you are putting out there is the question. Are you making our father name, our father, our Abba Yah's name blasphemed before the heathen? Cause he said, you, you, you know, you are, you are, you take pride in the Torah 
And you know, you beat your chest, you know, I'm Israel and you go around teaching hatred. No one can see the love of Yah in you. Many of you worrying about what's happening to the other nations. And that's why I took part three down from my channel because I am not going to allow any, um, teachings that come on my channel that's going to give the inclination that no one else that's outside of Israel can be saved. Um, that we hate anyone else that's not an Israelite. Yes. Are there people from other nations that hate us? Yes. Do we know that they have plans against us to try to exterminate us? Yes. But you know what? My hope and my trust is in Yah. What Yah was, was being put in place in my spirit is stop worrying about the other nations. And I'm talking to many of you who may be watching this now. You might not agree. Stop worrying about what's going to happen to the other nation and worry about what's going to happen with you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Stop worrying about other nations and who's going to be saved and who's not. Stop worrying about having 10 wives and, and, and worried about who got on pants and who, who's, you know, got the hair wrap, all of these things, but yet you're still fornicating. Yeah, you, you worrying about having 10 wives and can't take care of the one that you got or mistreating the ones you have. Y'all didn't send us over here to build. He did, he, we are here for punishment. He didn't come send us over here to build. He didn't send us over here for glory and for us to look good before the Gentiles. We are here as a punishment. And anything that's happening to our people right now is because we refuse to repent. Our people refuse to turn back. Many of you, the Father Yah, who are still in Christianity, Father Yah has called you to come out, and you still refuse to come out. 2021 is the year of repentance. What I'm getting in my spirit is that if you are not repenting this year, you're going to be visited. He's tired. The Father Yah is he's tired of the stiff neckness with this nation. He's tired of many people who are using his name in vain, breaking the third commandment, saying that you serve him, yet you're still fornicating. You're committing adultery. You're saying that you serve him, you're still getting drunk. Every other word out your mouth is a curse word. You're still in the clubs. You're still living foul. You're still walking around. Many of you, especially in Israel, walking around in envy and jealousy, hatred, slander, gossiping, all of, don't know how to walk in love with your brother or sister, which is a second greatest command. Many of you think you're getting into the kingdom and you hate your brother and sister without of cause. I get it all the time. This is, I told many of you before, since I've been in this walk, and I'm so glad that my trust is not in men and how I felt like Many so-called brothers and sisters, especially a lot of the women in this truth, I dealt with so much envy, so much jealousy, and it's it's not it's unreal. Just people just hating you, disliking you, never met you. And I it was days and times where I told my sister Prina, like, wow, you know, I was excited when I came into this, but this this truth is not about people. My, I'm so glad that my faith and my trust is not in men, but it is in Yah. This is where your hope has to be because men will fail you. Men will, will fail you every time. I have seen it time and time again where I've had new people who have come into the truth that we are Israel, his chosen people, so excited having so much zeal and hunger and thirst for wanting the truth. Then they run into one of these crazy Israelite superhero camps. And all of a sudden now they have turned away from the faith because they believe that this wicked behavior with how they're treating the women running around trying to have 50 wives and Telling the women that they can't receive salvation. There are actually people out here that actually were saying that the women can't receive the Holy Spirit. This is why your faith, your, your faith, your, your trust and your hope has to be in the Father, Yah, and His Word. You have to be immovable, firmly fixed, rooted, 
grounded in our Messiah, in our Messiah, not allowing anyone and their be ill and their ill behavior, okay, and their conduct to turn you away from the love of the Father Yah. So Paul is saying in First Peter chapter two, verses twelve and um, eleven and twelve that make sure that your conduct. And I'm talking to those of you, whether you're Israel or not, if you're saying if you're a believer, make sure that your conduct is honorable, that you are truly representing the Father Yah by how you live your life. Because you can have on whatever kind of clothing you want. You can have a Mitri sitting up on top of your head. You can have on tassels. You can have your head wrapped. You can speak fluent Hebrew. You can do all of those things. But if you have no love for the Father God, if you don't love his people, if you don't love your brother or sister, if you if you are hating your brother or sister without a cause, that is murder. If you're walking around with a spirit of envy and jealousy, if you're walking around in unforgiveness, if you if you don't know how to wholeheartedly walk this walk out in full spirit and truth and you're compromising still walking around in sexual immorality and lust you will not see the kingdom whether you israel or not that's why he says all of israel is not israel you can be blood descended israel have it flowing through your veins you're still not getting into the kingdom if you have a repented of your sins so this message is go and read first Peter chapter 2, 11 and 12. We who are in our who are truly in our Messiah, Messiah Yeshua, we are no longer walking in our ignorance as we did in times past, getting drunk, carousing out with the world, you know, fornicating, committing adultery, you know, doing those things that we know we should have walked away from a long time ago. We are now walking in spirit and in truth. If you're walking in spirit, you're walking and you're being led by his work. I could just, his Holy spirit, his Holy spirit is going to lead you to all truth. Make sure that if you're doing this truth, that you're not following anybody, including me or anybody else on YouTube, that you're following the word. Make sure that because men will fail you, they will fail you every time. And the next thing you know, boom, you don't believe in the Messiah no more. That's what's happening. Now people are just thinking that, Oh, well, this pastor failed me or this teacher failed me or this. I got hurt here. So now I don't even want to believe in the Messiah anymore. Oh, I'm going to turn away from this walk. This walk is not a religion. This is a lifestyle. This is who we are. And we had a custom. We had traditions. We had a way of living. And that was according to the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments of the Most High Yah. And so I'm going to end it here. And tell those of you who are going out here teaching hate, going around saying hate the white man, going around teaching to hate other nations. Yes, there are plenty of nations that hate us. We're aware of that. We're not stupid. But at the end of the day, everybody that's white is not my enemy. I have more people that's probably my enemy that, that look just like me. Don't get, don't, don't get it twisted and think just because somebody is of a, of another, of another nation that they're your enemy. You don't know who Yah is going to use. The, as I said in my last video, the fire is getting ready to get turned up. And of those of you, whether you're Israel or not, if you're saying you're a believer, if you are, are not keeping his commandments, if you haven't repented of your sins and repented of those things he's told you to do, this is a year of visitation. Y'all's not playing anymore. Judgment is already in the earth and it begins and it starts with the house of Israel. So those of you who are saying you're awakening, and you're walking in truth, act like you're walking in truth. Be a, the, the, be the embodiment, the true, um, image of our Messiah, be that perfect example. Let people, when they see your walk and how and they see your and hear your speech and how, when you use your words, that you use your words to build up and to edify, not to tear down, to slander, to gossip, and to use it in a way that is going to make our Father Yah's name be blasphemed before the heathen. So having said that, I'm going to end this because I've gone on far longer than I needed to, but I was being led in the spirit. And as I was hearing, I was speaking it. So 
what I want to say is this, and this is what the Father Yah was placed in my spirit. Stop worrying about the other nations, what's going to happen with them, and start getting your houses in order and worrying about if am I saved? Am I being saved? Have I examined myself to see if I'm in the faith? How, how is my walk? We can't be worried about somebody else and your house is not ready. And so, Israel, stop worrying about the other nation because judgment starts with you. Shalom, family. Who, um, who have left this walk because of how they've been treated. So my last message is stop worrying about what's happening with other people and worry about working out your salvation. Repent for the kingdom of Yah is at hand.